Bad news for anybody who actually believes in democracy. Uh, now, a federal appeals court has just recently ruled that members of the Electoral College, that's uh, uh, basically the, the body that decides who's going to become president. Uh, now, these members who cast their votes for a president now don't have to go by who wins their state, but just by who they feel should be president. Now, this is a ruling that happened recently uh, by the 10th Circuit, uh, 10th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in Colorado. So now this ruling focused on a case of Michael Baca. Uh, now, Baca is a Colorado Democrat, and he decided that he wasn't in favor of Hillary Clinton. Look, I, I can agree. <laughs> I wasn't hugely in favor of Hillary Clinton. I still ended up holding my nose. I voted for her uh, in order to avoid the disaster that is Donald Trump. Uh, if it were up to me uh, and the millions of people who supported Bernie Sanders, he would have been the nominee. He would have crushed Donald Trump. But anyway, Baca had other ideas. Uh, it turns out that, yes, he didn't like Hillary Clinton. So instead, he wrote in uh, and voted for, actually, Republican John Kasich. So, hmm. Now, when that happened, uh, Colorado, uh, the Secretary of State in Colorado, said, no, no, you can't do that. No, no. In Colorado, we vote for the people who actually win the state. In th that case, that was Hillary Clinton. And so he should respect his constituents and cast his vote for Hillary Clinton. He did not, so he got replaced. Uh, so now the court obviously disagrees with that. Uh, and in their majority opinion, they wrote this. The text of the Constitution makes clear that states do not have the constitutional authority to interfere with presidential electors who exercise their constitutional right to vote for president and vice president candidates of their choice. So this seems like a technical ruling to me, right? Oh, no, it's just the state interfering. You can't just go and replace that guy because you don't like the way he voted, even though his vote does not represent the will of the voters. So that's the problem here. Again, this isn't a case of, hey, man, look, I'm a private citizen. I'm voting in the election uh, and I'm voting for somebody that I like. I, I don't like Bernie or I don't like Donald Trump. I don't like Hillary Clinton. I'm going to vote in John Kasich or in my case, like, oh, I would want to vote for Bernie Sanders. Uh, fine if you want to do that. Perfectly fine, right? Uh, it's not fine if you're a member of the Electoral College because, again, you have more you have more weight under our system, right? Or, or if you're a delegate during a primary, by the way. Um, that, unfortunately, has, like I said, more weight in the system that we have. Uh, and, of course, that brings me to the problem in the system that we actually do have. Uh, because, look, I feel like we should have more voter representation. I feel like we should have one person, one vote. The Electoral College is completely against that. That's, no, uh, that gives, uh, you know, smaller states far more representation. And I know the argument against that is, yeah, but even though we have less people in our state, we should count more because we have less people. Again, I, I don't like that argument, right? It's kind of a ridiculous argument to me, uh, as well as anybody who actually believes in more direct democracy. So now, one critic of this, uh, this ruling, uh, is Lawrence Lessig. Now, Lawrence Lessig is a Harvard Law professor, and he's been doing a lot of great work uh, against money and politics. Uh, and he actually founded the group that brought the case uh, against Baca. Uh, now, that was equal citizens, right? And he said it was the first time a federal appeals court had ruled on whether electors could be bound in how they vote. So now Lessig, again, I, I believe he believes in democracy. And so what they're doing is like, hey, you can't actually have this happen. What Baca did is, is not good. Uh, we should have the Supreme Court to weigh in. Uh, and he said, quote, whatever your side you're on, whether you think it's a good or a bad idea for electors to have freedom, the question ought to be resolved before there is a constitutional crisis. So he's not wrong. And so, look, um, the big problem with the Electoral College, in my opinion, is that it exists. <laughs> it's a leftover from when we had the slave states. I, I don't like the idea that there's an unelected group of people who decide who win the election. No, no, no. The voters should matter. The voters should matter far more. I mean, look, generally members of the Electoral College 
would, for the most part, vote for whoever took the popular vote in most of the states, right? But we have had situations where that did not happen. Uh, in fact, you've had at least two elections that I remember, that I know of, possibly more, uh, where members of the Electoral College looked at the popular vote and said, yeah, no, no, we're going to go and still allow this president uh, or this person to become president, even though the majority of Americans did not vote for them. That's a big, big problem in my, uh, you know, big problem in my opinion, right? It's not democracy. And look, I know I'm going to get comments like, well, we're not a democracy. We're a representative republic. Well, even so, if the member of the Electoral College votes against the will of the people in the state, the majority that said vote for X candidate, then is that even representative at all? And why should they have even more power to not be representative of the will of the voters? And that's exactly what this does. This gives more power to the elector to say, mm, I'm just going to go with my gut. I'm going to go with how I feel. And I don't like this candidate. And I'm going to vote for someone else, despite my state actually voting for this candidate. So th that's the problem. And look, let me give you a couple of uh, examples, right? Let's go with Bernie Sanders, right? So what if Bernie Sanders wins Michigan? And the electors say, and, and this is a general election, by the way, Bernie Sanders wins, he becomes the nominee uh, for the Democratic Party. And then he goes up against Donald Trump. And the majority of Michigan voters say, okay, let's go with Bernie Sanders. But here you have electors in the state of Michigan saying, no, I'd, you know, I'd rather have Donald Trump than Bernie Sanders. So I'm going to vote for Donald Trump. You don't think that would happen? This ruling opens the door for exactly that scenario. Or let's go with the reverse scenario. Say Donald Trump wins Michigan, right? And say, for example, maybe we have Elizabeth Warren, right? Uh, that's running against Donald Trump and, and, and Donald Trump wins Michigan somehow or Donald Trump wins Pennsylvania again. Right. So, uh, you know, here you have an elector in Pennsylvania saying, actually, no, you know what? I like Elizabeth Warren more, so I'm going to vote for her. And she ends up winning the election, especially if it's super close. That's a situation that could happen. So think about this, conservatives. Think about that. Would you rather have more of a democracy or these electors being able to do whatever the hell they want and basically usurping the will of the voter. Because that's the system that we're going to right now. That's the system that we have. Now, here's the thing. Uh, again, bad rule, undermining popular vote, right? Uh, and I think as a consequence, this ruling will have uh, – and actually it will reduce the number of people who are voting – why? Because the reaction will almost certainly be, hey, well, what, what's the point of voting then? <clears throat> if somebody's going to take my vote and basically throw it away and vote and, and, and cast their electoral ballot for someone else or use their electoral vote to support someone else that we didn't support, then what's the point of voting? Look, I get it, right? Now, don't do that. Don't say, no, I'm not going to vote because there are states that are putting in safeguards uh, that are saying that you do have to respect the wishes of your voters. Uh, and I think there's 20 something states that have signed on to that right now. And of course, like I said, uh, Lord, Lawrence Lessig wants to take this to Supreme Court. So we'd have to see how that shakes out. But nonetheless, th this is, I mean, this is uh, how they're trying to steal your vote. And why we need to push harder instead of giving up, push harder to actually change the system to make it more small d democratic. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.